What's up guys, Ame here with another video. Farming up Priebus and getting ready for the first raid in an expansion is probably one of my favorite parts about World of Warcraft, and I've thoroughly enjoyed making these videos about what gear you will need to get into Phase 1 of raiding, as well as the sweet loot that drops in Phase 1. In this one, we'll be looking at some of the best quest items that you can get in the Outlands to round out your Priebus set. Since you don't need to run any heroic dungeons to get into Karazhan, Rule's Lair, or Mag Theradon's Lair, the items we'll be looking at in this video will be the best options for you outside of heroic dungeons and crafting. While some of these quest items will be your actual Priebus, we'll be looking at some of these quote unquote budget pickups that are still really solid and will get you ready for raid quick without having to worry about reputation needed to get into heroics. Let's get into it. Real quick guys, before we get started, if you end up enjoying this video or have enjoyed some of my previous videos, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. It helps the channel grow and allows me to get more content out like this and I greatly appreciate it. Starting out in Hellfire Peninsula, we've got a dungeon quest for Shattered Halls, the will of the war chief or turning the tide. You'll pick this quest up from Nazgril and Thralmar if you're Horde, or from Force Commander Danith Trollbane if you're Alliance. This quest will send you into the Shattered Halls to retrieve War Chief Kargath's weapon and return it for some solid loot. The main item we're looking for with this quest is the Mantle of Vivification or Viker's Cloak. This is a perfect cloak for Resto Shamans, only being beat out by some rare BOE world drops or heroic drops, and is also a solid pickup for any other healer that can't be bothered to get another one. Now if you laughed in the face of all the min-maxers yelling Horde is superior in TBC and rolled Alliance, you get a little tiny bonus of having an extra quest in Shattered Halls that rewards some great Priebus gear, Fell Embers. This quest is pick up from Magus Zabraxis in Honor Hold, and she wants you to bring her a Fell Ember from the Grand Warlock Nethercurse within the Halls. This quest offers 5 rewards, each one being a solid Priebus option for somebody. You've got the Curate Boots, which are amazing for Holy Priests and Resto Druids, the Rune Engraved Belt for Enhancement Shamans, the Gloves of Preservation for Resto Druids, the Expedition Scout Epaulets for Rogues and Enhancement Shamans, and the Dauntless Handguards for Prop Paladins, which are their 100% Freebus Glove option. Nothing beats these. If you're one of these classes, the only better options you have come from Heroics, Expensive Crafting, or Reputation. So do this easy quest for fast rewards. Staying with the dungeon quest, but moving over to World of Warcraft's Mushroom Kingdom of Zangermarsh, we've got the Warlord's Hideout in the Steam Vaults. Starting with Watcher Jang in the Coilfang Reservoir, he tasks you to scour the Steam Vaults, find Warlord Calithresh, and slay him. Upon returning, he will offer you four rewards, with Helm of the Claw being the item we're looking for here. This helm is absolutely bonkers for rogues, hunters, DPS warriors, and rep paladin. It's also good for our feral cat friends, but they're still stuck using the level 40 crafted wolf's head helm from Classic WoW, so that sucks for them. This helm has a juicy combination of agility, hit rating, and attack power, and also flexes that nice meta socket. This helm is only beat out by the Engineering Goggles or Season 1 Arena Helm, and for some classes a heroic drop, so this helm should 100% be on your list if you're one of these four classes. There's tons of great gearing from dungeons, so let's keep it rolling and move over to Aukendun? Aukendon? I don't know how to say this one, let me know in the comments below. Before heading over to the dungeons, make a stop in Shatrath and talk to spy mistress Melissa Highcrown to start the chain for Into the Heart of the Labyrinth. This quest will require you to kill the last boss in Shadow Labs, Murmur. Upon completion, you will be offered one of four boots. The Shatrath Jumpers are a solid option for casters, especially Warlocks and Shadow Priests. Rebus for them is of course the Frozen Shadow Weave Boots from Tailoring, which you should highly consider crafting. But if you're low on funds or just not about that tailoring life for some reason, these are your second best option, so make sure you do this quest. There's also the Shatari Rot Greaves, which are great for both Rep Paladins and DPS Warriors. The only thing really beating these boots out are the Fell Leather Boots from Leatherworking. These boots are more than good enough to get you into raids without having to worry about tracking down all the mats to craft the leatherworking ones. While in Shadow Labs, make sure you also do the quests of the Soul Devices. These devices are scattered among the Shadow Labs and you just have to collect 5 of them to get some pretty sweet rewards. You've got the Shatrath Wraps which are okay for casters, they aren't the best, but a lot of better options come from Heroic or Reps. 
These bracers are the best a Boomkin can get outside of Heroics or from being a leather worker. So go for them to get into Karazhan fast. Also from this quest, you have the Spy Mistress Wrist Guards, a great pickup for both rogues and DPS warriors, especially since hit rating is very valuable this early in the game. Heading over to the Akani Crypts, you're going to want to talk to Hale and pick up I See Dead Drene, which starts the quest chain that leads to everything will be alright. Once again, another kill the bad guy quest. Once finished, casters will be able to pick up the, however you say this, Alkanai, Alkanai, Anchorite's robe. This chest piece is solid, with the only things better being the tailoring chests, Spellfire robe and Frozen Shadow Weave, and Robe of the Crimson Order, which is a world drop and will probably be very expensive. This robe is easy to get and is actually really, really good. And if you're one of the casters that aren't going tailoring for whatever reason, this robe is going to be your best bet at pre-raid this. Leaving the forested landscape of Terracar, we're going to make our way over to the best zone ever created. And if you disagree, I'm sorry, you're wrong. Good old Nagrand. Starting with Corky down in the Burning Blade Ruins if you're Alliance or with Matron Drakia if you're Horde, these two different quest chains will both eventually lead you to Chowar the Pillager, where you will slay Chowar and bring his head back to exchange for some juicy rewards, the main one we're looking for being the Ogre Slayer's cover. This cloak has Elemental Shaman and Balance Druid written all over it, since Spell Crit is like a drug for them. Shawl of Shifting Probabilities from Badges is almost the same thing and costs 25 badges, so you chickens and lightning throwers, pick this cloak up and call it a day if you so desire. Next up in the grand, we have the ultimate blood sport, the final boss quest of all the morally questionable Nessingware Safari quest line. This quest fills a nice void in gearing for holy paladins and resto druids and resto shamans, increasing the healing done for one of each class's healing abilities. The gearing options for idols, librams, and totems are few and far between this early, so throw on your hunting gear and get ready for the ultimate blood sport. Last up in the grand, we've got the quest Gurok the Usurper. Starting at Elementalist Untrag at the Throne of Elements, this quest chain eventually leads you to once again killing someone and bringing back their head in exchange for some sweet rewards. Neck pieces are the loot options on the table for this one, with Earthen Mark of Raising being the Prebus item we're after. This neck is super solid for hunters and rogues and honestly all physical DPS. With only the Bone Chain Necklace in Heroic Underbog and Choker of Vile Intent for 25 badges being better options. There's another neck piece we'll get to later that's a little better for other classes, but they are both very good. Leaving the beautiful rolling hills of Nagrand behind, let's move up to the dreaded Blades Edge Mountains, a quester's hell if you don't have a flying mount. If you hate this area, suck it up for a little bit because we're only looking at two quests and they give some solid previous options. First up, let's look at the Houndmaster, which drops the other physical DPS necklace. This quest starts from the Damage Mask, which is a drop from the Fell Corruptors in the northeast area of the zone. This will send you on a long quest chain that will eventually end in you, surprise surprise, killing some big bad guy Balemon the Houndmaster. Upon killing him, you'll return to Wild Lord Antelarion, tell him how cool you are, and he'll present to you six necklaces that you can choose from. Natasha's Choker is the other physical DPS neck we talked about, and is really good for rep paladins and DPS warriors, only being beat out by the Choker of Vile Intent for 25 badges of justice. There's also a good healing neck here, but there's an even better one which we'll get to when we hit Netherstorm. Lastly in Blade's Edge, we've got the quest Showdown. If you're Horde, have fun digging through dead Bladespire Ogre corpses for a Thundering Clan artifact to start this long quest chain. If you're Alliance, you've got it easy, head on over to Ruan Weld and talk to Commander Hafiz Stonewall to start a much shorter quest chain for the same item. The two items we're looking for from this quest are the Cleft Hoof Hide Leggings and Blackened Chest Piece. These leggings have expertise on them, which is actually a pretty rare stat to see in TBC this early, making them very, very valuable for rogues and enhancement shamans, only being beat out by some heroic drops and the Fell Leather Leggings from Leatherworking. This quest also rewards the Blackened Chest Piece, which is crazy good for both Rep Paladins and DPS Warriors, only being beat out by the Arena 1 chest piece or the chest plate of Adult from another quest chain. That's it for Blade's Edge, so let's get out of there and move on to Netherstorm. There's a ton of great gearing options from Quest and Netherstorm, so let's try to get through this quick. In TBC, you'll have to pick between two factions, the Aldor and the Scryer, 
and they both have different quests they offer. In the Scryer Bank and Shatrath, Arcanist Raystan will task you with going to Area 52 in Netherstorm to start a very long quest chain that eventually leads to the quest turning point, where you will have to slay Sokrathar. And the quest rewards from this are pretty sweet, the main one being Sokrathar's Girdle. This belt is really, really good, with only belts from leatherworking like Primal Strike Belt or Fellstalker Belt, as well as some heroic drops like Girdle of the Death Dealer being the only better options you can get. If you're a melee physical DPS dealer, this spell is for you. On the Aldor side of things, we have a quest reward for some healers that is full Priebus. We're talking nothing else beats this item, it's that good. This quest chain starts at Anchor at Karja in Area 52 and will eventually lead to shutting down Manaforge Aura. Once completed, you will have the choice between Karja's Medallion and Overseer's Signet. Overseer's Signet is actually pretty good for Enhancement Shamans, so pick that up if you need the hit. But the real item we're looking at is Karja's Medallion. This necklace is amazing, landing in the number one previous slot for both Holy Priests and Resto Druids. It's still a solid pickup for every healer, but you Holy Priests and Resto Druids will want to make sure you pick this up as soon as you can. Sticking with the Aldor, we have Deathblow to the Legion next, a long quest chain that starts with Vindicator Aeus in the Aldor Bank in Shatrath. This is the Aldor version of the quest turning point, which we talked about before, and ends with you killing Sokrathar. The item we're going after here is Kaylan's Signet, an insanely good ring for every physical damage dealer in the game. The stats on this thing are massive, 15 agility, 10 hit rating, and 50 attack power. The perfect combo of itemization that will make any physical damage dealer drool, and all you have to do is a quest line. The ring is one of the best Priebus rings you can pick up, with the options that are better locked behind exalted reputation walls or off of heroic bosses. We're actually going to take a quick detour down to Shadowmoon Valley where we can find the Slayer's Mark of the Redemption, which is actually the same exact ring, and not locked behind the all lore wall. Starting with Thane Yorgar and Wildhammer Stronghold if you're Alliance, or Overlord or Barak in the Shadowmoon Village if you're Horde, this quest chain consists of only 5 quests and ends with Dissension amongst the ranks, where you can pick up this insane ring. If you're Aldor, you can get both of these and call it a day, but at the very least, do this quest in Shadowman Valley because this ring is really, really good. Moving back up over to Netherstorm, we have Declawing Doomclaw, the third quest in a quest chain that starts at Papa Wheeler in Area 52. This quest rewards Mama's Insurance, which is actually a really good ranged weapon for rogues and DPS warriors, giving the exact stats they want. The only better weapon than this for pre-raid is the gun that comes from Thrallmore or Honorhold Exalted. So I don't know about you, but I'd rather do the easy quest than take the time to grind to Exalted, because that's going to take a while. Another green item that is sneakily really good are the Farlight Studded Boots from the quest of Fate Worse Than Death. These boots were made for Enhancement Shamans, with the only boots better being the Boots of the Unjust in Heroic Architraz and the Fell Leather Boots from Leatherworking, and these are easy to get. You just need to start the quest chain that starts with the Archmage Staff from Ravendor in Area 52. Once you complete the third quest in this chain, Curse of the Violet Tower, you can talk to Custodian Dyworth and do this quest. Alright, next up we have Hitting the Motherload. The chain starts with the quest In Search of Farlight from Zubin El Janubi in Stormspire. Once completed, healers will be able to pick up the Celestial Jewel Ring, a disgustingly good ring for a quest chain that consists of only two quests. Resto Shamans and Holy Paladins will want to be all over this ring, since it matches up perfectly with their stat prios. But really any healer can pick this up and call it a day for their Karazhan Priebus. Securing the Celestial Ridge is the sixth and final quest in a chain that starts with a not so modest proposal, from Wind Trader Merit up by Manaforge Ultras. Another seemingly lackluster item, don't let the green title on these bracers fool you hunters. The Golden Link bracers have no business being as good as they are, giving large amounts of crit and attack power, as well as some MP5 to help with those longer fights. The only things better than these are the even nether scale bracers from Leatherworking and the bracers of the hunt from Heroic Sethic Halls. So do this easy quest and pick these up. Alright, we're getting close to the end of Netherstorm. There's just so many good items to talk about here. Let's show our tanks some love and look at the quest Dealing with the Overmaster, a simple two quest chain that starts with Dealing with the Foreman from Wind Trader Tulaman up by Manaforge Ara. This rewards the Wind Trader's Band, 
which is another green item that has no business being as good as it is. Any tank can pick this up with the only rings better being Band of Impenetrable Defenses, which is a BOE world drop and is going to be stupidly expensive in phase one. And the Ring of Unyielding Force that costs 25 badges of justice. There's also Elementium Band of the Century in normal Architraz, but really this ring is crazy easy to get and is actually really, really good. So you should pick it up. All right, we finally finished Netherstorm. So last but not least, let's head down to Shadow Moon Valley. First up, let's look at an interesting item that you can get from the quest Subdue the Subduer. This two quest chain starts with the quest The Soul Cannon of Reth Hadron from Illidari Lord Balthus down on Netherwing Ledge. Once you complete this quest, you can get the Illidari Rod of Discipline. Lackluster looking at first, don't let this wand fool you casters, especially if you're a Shadow Priest. This wand only has 13 spell power, but has that sneaky blue socket with an added socket bonus of two more spell damage. This means you can throw in a big spell power gem and boost this wand up over 25 spell power if you have a gem big enough. Since classes like Shadow Priest and Affliction Locks want pure spell power and not critical strike since it doesn't scale with their dots, a wand like this is a big sleeper item this early in the game and can get you high up on those meters. Going back to an item that's good for enhancement shamans, we have the quest Terror Gorfiend I Am. This quest chain starts with the quest Chief Apothecary Hildegard from Fante down in the lower city and ends with you slaying Carcius the Ancient Watcher. Once completed, six helms will be offered to you. These helms are all really good, but enhancement shamans will be the ones drooling when they see the Stealthers Helmet of Second Sight. The only thing better than this for enhanced shamans are the engineering goggles. So it's safe to say that this helm is a solid pickup. Pretty much any DPS class can pick up one of these helms and head into Karazhan, but there are better options out there, with Enhancement Shamans being the ones who really benefit from this quest. For the next quest, we have to head all the way back over to Nagrand and pick up Krogan's report from Captain Krogan and Garadar if you're Horde, and Visions of Destruction from Seer Javar and Talar if you're Alliance. This long quest chain will eventually lead you to the quest News of Victory, and it gives some pretty great rewards. There's Band of Anguish, which is only two less agility than the rings we talked about before. So if you're Scryer and are bummed that you couldn't get the other ring from the Aldor quest, you'll want to pick this ring up as the only two better are Adal's Command from being exalted with the Shatar and Shafar's Band of Brutality off of your and Heroic Mana Tombs. Idol of the Avenger is situationally great for Boomkins, as Wrath does good damage but eats mana fast. So if it's a quick fight, you can use this idol as a great pickup. Libram of Righteous Power is a solid Libram, but any rep paladin who is serious is going to get into Heroic Blood Furnace to pick up Libram of Avengement. This Libram is super bis and will last you a long time, so you should work on getting it. Until then though, pick up Libram of Righteous Power from this quest. For this last quest on the list, we're heading back to Azeroth and checking out the Caverns of Time. After following a custodium of time around for what feels like hours, you will go back in time to Old Hills Broad Foothills to free Thrall from Durnhold Keep. Once Thrall is safe, you will get the quest Return to Andormu, which rewards the gloves Tempest Touch, which is a solid pickup for any caster but mainly Shadow Priests. Those two blue sockets are massive and can be used to juice the spell power up on these bad boys, which is what Shadow Priests are all about. All right, there you have it, guys. Tons of fantastic previous options from Questing in the Outlands. If you enjoyed this video, you know the drill. Hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. It helps the channel grow and allows me to get more content out like this, and I greatly appreciate it. We're also live on Twitch pretty much every night, and if you haven't checked out the stream yet, stop on by. They're crazy fun. That's it for me today, though, guys, and I'll catch you on the next one.